So I thought I'd start just with a kind of quick overview of what Sunblock is. Um, so this is the home page for the website. Um, Sunblock is a new website which we just launched last year, which offers free masking. So teachers or students can sign up on the website for free accounts. And teachers can also create their own accounts for students. They can create customized activities for their students. And students can track their progress and work towards goals, which are set for them by the website or for their, by their teachers. So um, everything on the website is free. So everything that I just mentioned to you is free, except for the student reports. Um, reports will not be used during the contest, and there's no obligation to buy anything during the contest or afterwards or ever. So please don't worry about that. And you can also continue to use the free accounts that you create after the contest finishes. So, yeah, there you go. And um, now why don't we just take a look at, since I'm not sure if everyone has actually entered the contest yet, um, I'm just going to show you quickly how you actually go about entering the contest. And you can also pass this along to your colleagues um, if they're having trouble getting started. So let's say that um, I would like to enter the, the Shawnee Mission contest, which is in Kansas. So first, I'll just have to find my state. So here's a big list of all of the, the states for running contests. So you just find that. Once you've found your state, you'll see here it shows you me a list of all of the, the contests that are in this area. Um, and I can also see where they are on the map, so I can find them here. Up here, this is quite useful. This is some dog contest FAQ. So this is the frequently asked questions for the contest. So if you're having trouble getting started or, you know, anything really about the contest, this should be your first point of call. So here, it just goes through the questions that are most often asked by teachers about the contest or how to get set up. So I'm just going to go back here. Now I found my contest here, so I want to enter it. So I'll click on the Enter button. In order to enter the contest, you will need to have a free teacher account. So okay, that's free. Um, and if you don't have one already, you can sign up here. So this little sign up button is. So we'll click that. And then I just enter in my information. I agree to the terms you use to sign up. So here it shows me what I have the information I have signed up with. When I go back to the contest page, it says that I have entered the contest. Now, down here, before I continue getting set up with my account, I'll just also quickly point out some useful information that's on this page. Down here, it goes through the different prizes which are offered for the contest. These 15 students play in the contest during the prize period. So, for example, uh, if you're going for an overall prize, you would need to have 15 students play during the contest overall. Whereas for a daily prize, you would need to have 15 students play on that day. Okay. And the reason that we do that is because the results for the schools are actually average over the number of participating students. So we need to have at least 15 students to ensure that your results aren't being skewed, you know, that um, one particularly good student is not throwing your results off or one particularly bad student. Um, so that's why we ask for at least 15. And we have to play at least one game. One game is like about a minute long, so it's, it's a pretty small commitment. Now let's go to the dashboard. When I go to, so this is the teacher homepage. Once I go here, you'll see that it says that I need to add or join my school. So what that means is in order for a teacher to actually 
really use some dog, we need, you need to be part of a school. We do that so we can group all the teachers and students at that school together. Um, teachers actually work mutually. So any teacher at, at a school um, has equal admin rights as any other teacher at that school. New teachers have to be approved by the other teachers at the school um, so that we know that they're actual teachers um, and not just you know, scam artists trying to get access to student information. So I'm going to say here I probably have not Right, so my school is not in, surprise, surprise, to venture to fake, close code. Um, so now I need to create it. And most of you probably, um, I'm assuming that most of you probably will be doing this completely from scratch. So no one at your school will be using some dog yet. Um, so you'll need to sign up for yourself. So this is how you would do that. So I'm going to put in my school name. And then here I would put in my address, town, zip code, country where I'm in, and my time zone. So this is just, again, you'll need to make sure that this is set to the right time so that any activities that you create will show up at the right time on some dog. Otherwise, they'll show up, you know, <laughs> maybe a few hours too late or a few hours too early. Um, so So I'm putting in my information here, and then I say yes. And so I've finished setting up my school. I've done all this. I still need to verify my email, my email address. So I have not yet done that. So that, that's the last step, really, for getting set up. So we'll email you with a link. And you just need to click the link and say, yes, this is my email. And that's basically it. OK, so there you go. So that's all you would need to do to get set up on the, for um, for an account. Um, now I'm going to show you, so let's say that you already have an account and you now want to allow other teachers to get access. So I'm a teacher. This is another test account that I have created. Um, so I'm a teacher. I want to let other teachers at my school know about some dog. So I'm just signing in. You can click on this teacher. This will take me to the teacher page. Once I'm here, I can add other teachers to my school. As I said, any teacher can join up and request to join any school on SumDog. So when they, they can search for schools on the website and find your school and join that way, a slightly faster way is if you actually invite them to join. So that skips the approval bit that I mentioned. They don't actually need to be approved because we assume that if you've invited them, then that means you're pre-approving them. So to do that, you just go to your school page. And at the top here, you'll see this is a list of all the teachers that are um, in my school. So I just click Add Teacher, invite my email. And then here, I can just type in you know, any of my colleagues' email addresses and then send them an invitation. I can also copy this email. So this part, this link down here, um, if I copy and paste that into an email, they can also click on this. So let's say I want to invite, you know, 20 teachers at my school. This way is obviously a lot faster than typing in and sending each individual email. Um, but it does the same thing. So once I click on this link, they'll just get a prompt saying that they should sign up for an account um, and then that they've been asked to join your school. And then once they sign up, they're automatically added to your list of teachers. You also probably want to upload some students, obviously, um, since that will be needed for the contest. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to share my Microsoft Excel with you. So this is a little spreadsheet that I've made up. So these are my, my students. Obviously, if these really were my students, that would be amazing. But um, so here we have a list of students. So I have my first names on this side, then their last names, then their class names here. So these three students are in class A1, and these four are in class B2. Now, let's say that I already have a spreadsheet, but it has lots of other information in it as well, like um, their phone numbers or 
their groups that I use for them at school or other things. It does not matter. Any extra information that you have in the spreadsheet, you can just take out. And it doesn't even actually matter that the order that these are in, as long as you have these three. So as long as you have the first names, last names, and the class names, some dog doesn't really care. You can switch them around uh, once you've uploaded them. So I'm now going to go back to some dog. Right. So, so, right. So now I'm going to go to my student page. Um, and here at the top, so you can see I've already uploaded some students, but um, I'm just going to add in the students that were in the spreadsheet that I just showed you. So I'm going to click Upload Students, Upload a Spreadsheet. And again, this goes over what I just told you about what columns need to be in it and things like that. Um, so down here, I'm going to find the spreadsheet that I just showed you. So it's Name. And then I'm going to click Preview. So again, this just gives me a preview of what's actually going to be uploaded. So let's say I'm now looking at this, I'm like, oh, actually, I don't really want to create an account for her. She's not in my class. Or maybe I've put in two students, um, put in duplicates or something like that. I can just delete out rows that I don't want. I can also then switch around their first names or last names. So for example, if I've actually put it so that their last names are in this column, then their first names, I can just switch that around. I can also mark columns as ignore. So what that does is um, any columns which I do not want to be used, I can just mark them as ignore, and then the website will just ignore those columns when I upload. And then you just put confirm and save to upload. So I'm not going to do that now because I've actually already created these students. Um, but we can go look at them. So here's a list of all of the my classes. You can see I have a lot of classes in here. So these are the accounts that I created previously. Um, the class list here, so as you can see, I could filter down by classes just to see students in this class. And I didn't actually have to create this class. The website created it for me automatically when I uploaded these students. So I just put in the spreadsheet that I showed you, and it created this. So it created all the accounts for the students, I put them in the right class, and it gave them usernames and passwords. And then you just need to click this, or print. So that gives you a pre-formatted print page. It has their names on it. It has usernames and passwords. So you can just print this out and give it to the students, and then they should just be ready to go. You can cut them out, and they can save them in their folders or whatever. So now, I'm just going to then now show you what the students actually see when they come into the contest. So I'm going to go back to the Sundog home page. I'll just log out of my teacher account. So previously, I've actually added my one of my schools to a fake task contest. So I can show you what, what that will look like. So this is what the students actually see when they'll sign in. They get this. So as you can see, the student section is actually divided into three different activities with these arrows. They can go back and forth. Here, this shows me my multiplayer options. So if I'm in a multiplayer game, I can choose different options for who I actually want to play against. And on this side, I get to choose which game I want to be in. Now, all of the games on some dog actually draw from the same pool of questions, so it doesn't matter which game they're playing in. Each of the games is a little bit different, so students can just choose whichever one they prefer. On this side, because I'm in the, a contest, the contest page here, this will show me my results so far. So here I can see this is my current score. So here's me, BBB. And there's my school name, and there's my score, and this shows me where I've ranked. I can also check the overall results for the school. So as you can see, I'm the only person that's played in this contest so far, so we need to get more people in before we can qualify. And I can also check the daily results. So that's all here. So let's start a game so you can just see what that looks like. The questions that the students will be um, 
we'll be answering are actually drawn from a progressive activity. So what that means is when they start out, the questions start out relatively easy and then become more challenging as time goes on. So the website tries to gauge how quickly and accurately the students are answering the questions and then give them more challenging questions based on what they've done so far. You can see if I answer incorrectly, it'll warn me that I've done that. So I'm not going to play through the whole game, but you can get an idea of basically what this will look like. And again, I'm going to choose these questions. These are ones the website's choosing for me based on what it thinks I should be able to answer. So I'm just going to quit out of this and go back to the, the student page. So again, students can then keep track of their score here and see what they've done. These, um, the points they actually will be earning, these are based on the number of answers, um, the correct answers that they've gotten in the contest. We also give points for correct answers, which they can send the student shop. So that's an extra incentive for them if you know, seeing the name on the leaderboard isn't quite enough. They can also send things to the student shop. So, for example, they can buy, you know, t-shirts for their avatar, things like that. So that's just an extra bit of fun for them. And just, again, to give them a little bit of extra incentive to play on the website. And we always have that. That's not just part of the contest. That's all the time. All right. So if I went to the full result page, so this takes me to the full result page. Um, if you remember, when I entered this contest, it actually showed me two different links, enter and results. So the results link will, again, go to, that, um, to this page. So you don't just have to go through the contest activity in order to get there. So it shows me the student ranking here, the daily ranking, and the overall ranking. And I can also scroll through the daily ranking. So if I want to see you know, how people did on the previous day, I can go back and forth. The school can only win a daily prize once. So once you've won the daily prize, that's it. And then if you win another day, then the next person down, they win the prize. So it's just, again, it's just a bit to make it more fair and give everyone a chance to win something and participate. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the